What's up guys, Blue Sun JRPGs here, uh, reviewing my newest JRPG, and that is of course Toho Genso Wanderer. Um, you guys may have seen my unboxing video, you guys may have seen my anticipation video, um, but you'll know that I've been talking about this game for a while. I think I've been talking about it for about two or three months so far, I've had it pre-ordered for about that time. And I think this game was one of the games I was most looking forward to this year, other than maybe Nier or Persona 5. But either way, I've been super excited for this game. Um, I hope you guys like the video. If you do like it, be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, do all that good stuff. Uh, but without further ado, Toho Against the Wanderers, uh, published by NIS for the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation Vita. Uh, as you guys know, I will be reviewing the PlayStation 4 version. Um, I don't play the Vita, so if you guys do have the Vita, you might have a different experience than this one. But I just want to give you guys the full, honest experience of what I've had so far. So as per usual, the first thing I want to talk about is how the game looks, how the graphics are. Um, that's the first thing we all notice on a video game. I don't care if you say you don't care about graphics. That's the first thing you notice. It usually gives you a pretty good idea of the production value of a game, in my opinion anyway. Um, it shows you the level of detail they put into it, the level of money they were able to put into the game. So the first thing you could, that you could say about this game is obviously it's very anime-ish. Um, if you're looking for a super realistic game, you'll probably be disappointed by this, by the way it looks. Um, but actually, the game actually is very crisp looking. I think it's done very well graphically. Um, the second thing I want to talk about this game is how good this, how good the writing is. Um, like I said, I'm only about eight or ten hours in, so I haven't got anywhere near beating the game. But I think the I think the, the voice acting is is great. Um, I like the fact that they're going with a traditional Japanese voice actor, so they're not doing English dub. I think it works really well for this game, even though I typically do prefer English dubs. Um, I think the lines are hilarious as well. Almost every other line is a comedy line. And it's it actually makes me laugh, um, which is pretty unique for games. Usually, humor doesn't translate too well in most games, especially when it's subtitles. But they do a phenomenal job of the writing in this game. Um, I think the characters have so much personality. Almost every single character I've come along has felt unique. Um, especially the main character, she's felt so unique. I I'm not familiar at all with this series, to be honest with you. But, you know, playing this game, even in the first two hours, I felt a connection with the, with the main character. Uh, it was really ph really phenomenal story writing, so massive, massive props on that, on that front. And I would even go as far as say that the storytelling and animation is on par with an anime. I think it's that good, and I'm not just saying that. So the positives of this game, um, there are a lot of positives. Just to recap, are the crisp animation, the good storytelling, and the great character building. Um, those are really strong points in any game. And those are really the three main points you want to get in any game. So where did this game go wrong in some aspects? In my opinion, the biggest problem I've had so far is that the buttons don't fit onto my screen. I don't know if this is a specific, specific thing on just my TV or if it's across all the TVs. And this game is really more designed for the PlayStation Vita. Um, but that's obviously a major error. Um, I know it's version 1.0 so far, but they might so they might fix that. Um, or the, maybe there's a way to change the displays. I couldn't find one, and if it is a way, they didn't do a very good job of making it accessible to most people because I couldn't find it. That's obviously a major flaw. I mean, if you can't see the whole display, I mean that's gonna that's gonna dramatically affect your experience. The combat was okay, but the controls left a lot to be desired. Um, I really wish they did a, a different system. Um, the base default is you don't use the analog, you're just using the D-pad. I did that for the main part of the game that I've played so far. I did switch it over to try with the analog. Um, I think I might like just the D-pad a little better, but I thought the controls overall are pretty poor in my opinion. Just way too hard in combat to hit the opponents that you want to hit. The soundtrack is really done well. Um, I love that classical, traditional Japanese music. And JRPGs, I think that really fits well in most games. It really adds to the immersion. Um, but overall, guys, like I said, I haven't beat the game yet. Um, so I don't know if the story's going to come out in the end being poor. Um, I don't know that part, to be honest with you. Um, but so far, what I've played of the game is I think the game's really, really been good. And I would really recommend it. Um, the price is a little high. Um, 60 bucks. I think it's 60 bucks. I paid 84 for the uh, collector's edition, but... Um, overall, I think it's a solid game. If you're a, a diehard fan of JRPGs, definitely pick this game up. I think you'll have a blast with it. I know I am so far. Alright guys, peace out.